Professor, I've been waiting for you a while. I've just been out here watching the sky grow lighter. No, it's okay. I just got here way too early. It's really just hitting me. For the past five years, we've been fighting and fighting. But now the war's over. It's time for a new way of life. So, I've decided I want to take responsibility for my own fate. That's right. My crest doesn't decide my fate. I do. It's time for the first step in the right direction. I don't want to marry a girl who wants to use me for my crest. Or a girl who someone else chose for me. I want to marry someone I really care about. And, you know, maybe I can't. But I'd like to try. You don't believe me? I probably should have seen that coming. In that case, I'll just have to propose to you over and over again, until you know I'm serious. Marry me. I'd do anything for you. I'm done lying. Especially to myself. You mean... If we're together, I don't even care if I stay locked up inside for the rest of my life. If you told me you didn't want me to look at another woman, I'd go blind for you. Sorry about that. I got a little excited. I've spent my whole life relying on flowery language, so it's a bit hard to rein it in. Okay, calming down now. I'm just over the moon about this. With you by my side, I'm excited to find out what this new way of life is all about. We fought hard for today, and I'm beyond happy just to be alive. And now, I'm engaged to the perfect woman. Strike that. You know what? My happiness isn't what I care about today. I'm going to spend the rest of our lives together trying to make you happy. I promise. This place never changes. Even though Lady Rhea has withdrawn from duty and you have become the new Archbishop, the monastery that was in ruins has been rebuilt. The continent is united under its rightful king. Amidst all that change, this place stays the same. I have been considering what to do for some time, and I have chosen to remain here. Of course, I have obtained His Majesty's blessing in this. He told me I should live as I see fit. I believe this soldier's duty has come to an end. It feels lonely, yet I think it is a good thing. There is one other thing. My youth may be gone, but I would like to offer you my service as a knight if you will have me. The war is over, yet there are still difficulties to face. We of the Church must join hands with the Holy Kingdom of Fargus to make a better world for all. I am unsure how much I can do for you, but I hope I can form a bridge between the Church and the Kingdom. Aside from that, I suppose I can at least teach the orphans at the monastery to fish. Oh, I nearly forgot something very important. Yes. I would like to put an end to the deception that has been my life. Your Grace, I humbly request that you call me by my true name. I am Gustav Eddie Dominic. Yes, my liege. I hereby swear my allegiance to you, unwavering and forevermore. On my honor as a knight, I will shield you from all troubles. I swear from this day forth to protect your life and your smile. I finally found you. It is a fine night. The stars seem closer than usual. 
just like last time. I needed to speak with you. Yes. When I left the capital, I told His Majesty that I would be leaving his service. He accepted my decision with a smile. I do not think I have fully accepted it myself yet, to be honest. It was all so that I could give you this. I have come to ask for your hand in marriage. I adore you. I understand that, as the new Archbishop, you cannot take marriage lightly. But even in the face of rejection, I cannot leave these words unspoken. May I have your answer? You do? You will marry me? I am not good with words. Would you really have me, uninteresting as I am? <laughs> I see. Why are you making that face? Is it so odd to see me laugh? I see. Well then, I have one more request. I know it is sudden. But will you prepare to depart on a journey? I told you once before that I would like to show you the fields of Dusker in Bloom. I know that you cannot leave the monastery for long due to your position, but... <sighs> I am excited also to show you the flowers as they are meant to be seen in my homeland and to be by your side in all the days to come. Yes, it is a fine night indeed. Hey, what are you doing here? Waiting for someone? Haha! -ha. You've got a knack for rib ticklers, no bones about it. We weren't planning to meet up. Anyway, things seem to have quieted down across all of Fodlan. But we can't slow down now. The work's only just begun. In fact, we'll probably be busier than ever. Ha! Huh. You do look quite worn out. But when we've got a little breathing room, I'd like to go fishing with you. We can sit by the water together and idly cast our lines, not a care in the world. Uh... <clears throat> it occurs to me... Were you really waiting for someone? A little rendezvous, perhaps? Oh! So, who is it then? Someone I know? It is, isn't it? Captain Geralt, listen up! I'll ensure that your daughter is matched with none but the worthiest partner. I'm sorry, it's just... When it comes to your life, I get emotional, you know? You've... You've done so well. You've persisted through so many obstacles, and you just... kept on fighting. I have no doubt Captain Gerald's looking down proudly from heaven right now. And of course, I'm proud of you too. I'm a very proud... big brother. could have let that one slide. <clears throat> At any rate, let's keep marching forward together. For Fodlan. For the captain. Of course you can count on me. As long as I live, I'll be your most faithful ally. Come now, my friend. You must stop staying up so late. Tomorrow is yet another early morning. Then again, I know that matters little. You cannot sleep, can you? <laughs> Neither can I, of course. I... 
I want you to know I am sorry for making you do so much when your battle wounds aren't even completely healed yet. Do not worry about me. My shoulder has healed nicely. I still have some numbness in my hand, but it should not hinder me too much. It is a lovely night, is it not? How many years has it been since I was kept awake by hopes for the future, rather than by nightmares of the past? I have had the same nightmare for nine long years. A nightmare in which I am constantly tormented by those who have died. They ask me why I have not avenged them, why I got to live, yet they had to die. No matter how many corpses I piled up for them, in the end, their voices only grew louder. Voices loathing me, calling out to me, their inescapable death cries ringing in my ears, clinging to my soul. Even now, I can always hear them. I am certain I will be hearing them until the day I die, but I will not cover my ears. I will go on living, and their voices will serve as a warning, as a king, and as a wretch who claimed countless lives. I will build a kingdom where the people can live in peace. I am sure she would laugh and call such talk foolish, but I wish to change this world in my own way. Well, your grace, things will be busy from now on. Our first order of business is tomorrow's coronation. Once a professor and student, now an archbishop and a king. How very far we have come. That is true. <laughs> to me, you will always be the one who guided me so kindly. My ally through all. My beloved... Yes. My beloved. Listen. There is something I wish to give you before the coronation. Give me your hand. Please, I beg of you, say something. If you do not wish to accept it, please, just tell me. If so, I will face the truth and walk away. What is this? Yes, I see. Right. In that case, let us exchange them, shall we? Your hands. Now that I hold them within my own, I see how small and fragile they are. These hands that have saved me countless times. Thank you, my beloved. Your kind, warm hands. May they cling to my own forevermore. Professor, so this is where you went off to. You've been working so hard. You deserve a break. Is there any way I can lighten the load? Maybe, but I'm sure... Professor, so this is where you went off to. You've been working so hard. You deserve a break. Is there any way I can lighten the load? Maybe, but I'm sure there's more I could do. You need all the rest you can get. It's only going to get more hectic from here. Even I'm tired and I haven't done nearly as much. It's been a long struggle. Yeah. So many people have died, and far too many of them were civilians. But with the state we're in now, it might actually be the survivors who have it the hardest. I want to help them, like Lenato helped me. And now that I'm a knight, I feel like I actually can. Definitely. When I'm by your side, I'm full of hope for the future. And on that note, there's something I've been meaning to give you. I want to be with you for the rest of my life. 
I want to be there for every important moment, every smile, every hardship. I know I'm just a commoner and nothing special. I, I know I don't have a crest or a prestigious family legacy, and I've done things I'm not proud of. But if you'd be willing to look past all that, I, I also know we'd be great together. Yes, sorry, I, I'm, I'm struggling for the right words. It's funny, I, I've rehearsed this so many times. <laughs> but when the moment actually came, it, it all just ran right out of my head. What I mean to say is, I love you, and I want to marry you. You have a ring for me too? Am I dreaming? <laughs> You really feel the same way about me. Sorry, I'm kind of giddy. This doesn't feel real. To go from a life of stealing on the streets to marrying a wonderful person like you. Am I even allowed to be this happy? I'm worried it could all come crashing down at any moment. Even so, as long as we're together, I think I can handle just about anything. I'm looking forward to our future. I know I have my shortcomings, but I promise you, I'll do everything I can to make you happy. Finally, you came. Wars begin and end, but this place never changes. And you don't change either. That's true. We fought to bring peace to Foglin, but peace is so boring. No more chances to swing my sword at enemies, no more life-threatening battles. I know that these are positive developments, but I'm still a warrior at heart. Here I am, watching sadly as my blade grows dull. You're right. Damn, I can be a fool sometimes. And on that note, I'll tell you why I asked you to come here. Take this. Without a worthy opponent like you at my side, not only will my sword grow dull, it'll rust. So I had to think of a way to make sure you'd always be with me. This is what I came up with. And... You're pretty slow on the uptake. Don't you know what this ring means? If you keep messing around, I'll... I'll... Fine. Listen carefully. I'm not going to say this more than once. I want you to be my wife. Please say yes. Let's get married and stay together until we die. I love you. That's all. What? You have something to complain about? Oh. Okay then. In that case, I'd better start planning for the future. My future. With you. You must be exhausted. It seems like our work has only increased since the war's end, doesn't it? I am afraid that will not do, Your Majesty. We are in the process of forging a new age. All of Fodlan, noble and commoner alike, is watching your every move. You cannot abandon your post now. The people would feel betrayed. Rhea imparted this role to you and you are the only one who can fulfill it and accomplish all that must be done. Do you think anyone will permit you to shrink from this noble duty? I am sworn to help you as best I can. That sometimes requires brutal honesty. Believe me, I am just as overburdened as you. But I will not abandon this. Where you go, I follow.
Yes, for whatever centuries may yet be ours, I will always remain by your side. That is why I hope you will accept this. I will just come out with it. I love you deeply. Will you marry me? Since I have already tied my fate to yours, I could not help but imagine how lovely it would be to exchange wedding vows with you. But there is one thing I want to make sure you understand beyond any doubt. I am not proposing to you out of a sense of duty, nor a desire to perpetuate our bloodline. I want this because I am in love with you. I cannot conceive of a world without you in it. If you feel the same, will you do me the honor of joining your life with mine? You will. Then allow me to renew my pledge. From this day forward, I will always be at your side. Through good or ill fortune. Through the greatest of joys and the worst of woes. No matter how daunting the task, I will be there. However, we must always remember our duty to the people. Even if it is at the expense of our happiness. We should wait to announce our marriage until Fodlan's stability is restored. And with the thought of that day in mind, we must now return to our work. There are people waiting outside your office. Courage, my love. Let us go forth and face the world together. Oh, hey there. Just looking at the stars. I've been so busy, I haven't had much time for that lately. I don't know what to do now anyway. With Lady Rhea gone, I feel like there's not much point in me being here anymore. I don't know. Up till now, she's all I've been living for. That's the way it's always been. So I don't have any good ideas about what I ought to do next. I've got nowhere else to go. Not even back to Almira. What am I supposed to do here? Can't stay when there's nothing for me to do. Desire? Huh. I don't know. Only thing I ever really wanted was to serve Lady Rhea. I guess that's what I want. Someone I can help. I don't think I can live my life just for me. Do you think maybe... From now on? I mean... If you'd be okay with it, I could... A ring? O okay, it's a real snug fit. But why are you giving me this? No running a... Is this a cursed ring? If I run away, I'll die? Why would you... Oh, so I can't leave this place. You really want me to stay that badly? You know what? I'm happy to stay. I'll work real hard and be super useful to you. I think it's kind of who I am, living like this. Being real useful to other folks. Besides, I'll die if I try to leave, right? Actually, this ring could come off pretty easy. Nah, it gives me a reason to stay. That's the whole point, right? <laughs> Whether we stay or go, I'm sticking with you. I've gone and fallen in love, you know? To be honest, since the first day you showed up, I always did like you. Whew. I think I can get a good night's sleep now, knowing I'll still be here tomorrow. I'm gonna head to bed. Sleep tight. Love ya! See ya in the morning! Oh, Professor. Are you sure it's okay for you to be here? You're probably right. Even you need a break every once in a while. The war's finally over, but they're still putting you to work, huh? 
I bet you it's gonna get pretty busy from here on out. Fodlin sure has changed a lot since you were our professor. Some places lost their leaders, and other ones got wrecked from all the fighting. You gotta decide what to do about the church now too, huh? <laughs> Even I understand that much. I'd never become a great knight if I didn't. You bet I do. That's what I've been working toward all this time. I'm not sure you heard, but apparently the battles I fought in made me famous. Folks started calling me the Beast of Lester. Can you believe that? People calling me a beast? I was offended at first, but my little sis said it made me sound tough. She must be right, because I've had people asking me to work for them non-stop. I've made my decision, though. I know whose knight I want to be. Speaking of, I got this for you. Will you accept it? m m m Marry me, and let me be your knight, please. Remember when I told you how important you are to me? Well, I want to be with you, and stay by your side. I thought maybe if we got married, then we could always be together. It's awfully nice of you to worry about her, but she'll be fine. I barely took my eye off her, and she grew up into an adult. It won't be easy, but I want her to do whatever's going to make her happy. I'll still keep an eye on her, but she'll be off on her own soon. I guess what I'm saying is, don't worry about her. She'll be okay. I'm more worried about you. You gotta rebuild this world from scratch. That's a whole lot of weight for one person to carry. Enough to crush you. So, will you let me help you? It's a heavy load, but I want to carry it with you. What do you say? Will you let me be your knight? You... love me? <laughs> yes! Yes, yes, yes! From now on and for the rest of forever, this beast is gonna stay by your side. But wait, I can't just be a physically strong beast. I gotta have a strong mind too. Whatever you need, I'll work as hard as I can. As hard as anyone. I'll keep training to make sure you can count on me. And I'll love you forever and ever and ever. You actually came. I wasn't sure you'd find the time. You often asked me to meet with you, but this is the first time it has been the other way around. I know I gave you something of a headache. Please forgive my youthful impropriety. Now that the war is finally over, it seems I am able to resume my search for a suitable wife. Just one. Pedigree and status are no longer priorities for me. I now know that what matters most is the worth of an individual's soul. And there is only one person who calls to my heart, one whose incredible qualities outshine all others. That person is you. You'd expected this all along? I am I that predictable? <sighs> I'd hope to surprise you. I cannot believe I've made such a terrible blunder. Even so, surely you have some reply beyond that. No, I should apologize. I've gone and made you flustered. How abominably rude. Please don't fret about it. I'm no longer the type of person to get upset over others' manners. Do you remember when I said you were charismatic? By that time, I had already become unable to imagine anyone but you as my partner. But I did not feel I was your equal. Since then, I have worked tirelessly to improve, to become a man truly worthy of you. What do you think? Have I finally managed it? I was. 
In that case, please hear my humble proposal. I want nothing more than to be yours, now and for all time. Will you do me this great honor? You will? You do? Yes, of, of course this should happen. Not even if you scoured all Fodlin could you find a partner more worthy of you. Or my name isn't Lawrence Hellman Gloucester! <laughs> <clears throat> In any case, I swear to do my utmost to make you happy. And together, we will make this world a better place. So falls the curtain on our time of war. Though I suppose one can never say all is over and done. You have much still to do, and I have miles to go before I achieve my own dreams. We both have many hardships in store for us, don't you think? <laughs> Indeed. Well, that talk aside, I have a bit of a proposition for you. I believe it is better to travel the path through life with someone else, rather than go forward alone. And you are indispensable to my research. No, that's not the full truth. Yes, you are indispensable to my research, but also to my life. Altogether, I mean. I haven't any idea how to treat a woman properly, and so I've long thought I would spend my life alone. But then, well, I met you, and I want to share everything with you. If you happen to feel the same way, or, well, that is to say, would you accept this ring? Did I make you wait? Now, there is an unexpected development. My goodness. Well, since the feelings are mutual, I suppose there's no need to hold ourselves back any longer. Don't you agree? If so, I say we begin the next phase of our research. I wish to learn everything about you. Ready? No, no. There's no need to be ready. I'm not planning any tests. I don't want the power of your crest. I want you. First things first, I'd like to do a thorough study. And in return, perhaps you would care to learn all there is to know about me. I've never been the subject of someone else's research before, but I am open to the prospect. I can think of no one more suitable for the task than the woman I love. The future. Ah, I mean, our future. It offers quite a lot to look forward to. I can't wait to see the results of this new undertaking. I don't believe it. The painting I gave you. It was meant for you and you alone. You weren't supposed to show it to anyone, but you hung it in the reception hall. Because of all that you've done, now everyone knows, including my father. He's heard so much praise that he and my brother want to see it. He even told me that I should be an artist, that I'm more likely to succeed as an artist than a knight. Yes. I've dreamed of being an artist for so long, I stopped believing it would actually happen. You know, for that painting, I thought of the most beautiful thing in the world. Well, yes. It was a portrait of Sothis, the goddess who descended from heaven to guide humanity. But when I was painting her, I couldn't stop thinking of you. You are the most beautiful thing in the world. And beyond that, okay, here goes nothing. I want you to please accept this. Please. Do you accept? I can't measure up to you. 
You're the hero of Fodlin, and I'm just a painter. But I can't lie to myself any longer. I can't live my whole life denying myself what makes me the happiest. You taught me that. Taught me to see myself. You taught me everything. You've always been so patient and attentive. You never made me feel small or denied my feelings. You soothed my troubled soul. You are my goddess. I want to be with you for the rest of my life. To love you for all eternity. I want to paint your beauty in portrait after portrait. I want to stay by your side for now and forever. Will you let me? What? Did you say what I think you said? You're accepting me as your partner? I asked you because I didn't want to live with the regret of not asking. I decided to be honest, expecting you to spurn me, and yet... You said yes. You said yes. You said... Ah, right, sorry. Whew. I almost fainted there. You're sure, though? Absolutely positive? Then I promise to do whatever it takes to be a respectable man, worthy of your partnership. With my paintings, I will bring the world happiness. The same happiness that I feel when I look at you, my beloved goddess. Sorry, was that too much? Maybe I should just leave it at this. I love you with all of my soul. It has been a long, hard road. Would you agree? <laughs> you cannot humor me even a little. Perhaps we can agree that every long road comes to an end. That is when friends who have walked together must go their separate ways. You will guide Vodlin. I will return to my position as Duke Iyer. Life will go on. It must. I once asked something of you. I asked you to bear witness to my achievements. But even if I achieve nothing, and there is nothing left of me after I am gone, I still want you to see me. I mean that I want you to be my wife. I need you as much as I need my next breath. More, perhaps. I hope that you need me, too. That is it? You hear noble Ferdinand von Eyer declare his love for you, and all you say is, I understand? This is torture. Please, if you are going to refuse my proposal, simply tell me. I am not sure I understand. You do? Does that mean... Really? Oh, my head is ringing with pure joy, like a thousand bells. It is even greater than the joy of victory in battle. It is victory in life itself. <laughs> uh, apologies. I got a little carried away there. I am shaking. <laughs> I cannot control it. It would be no exaggeration to say that my whole life, everything I have done, has led me to this moment. I am overjoyed. <laughs> oh dear, I might faint. Give me a minute or two to regain my balance before you say anything too fantastic. Imagine making our way through life side by side. The whole world has taken on a rosy hue. Ah, it is no use. I cannot stay upright. Please, let me lean on your shoulder. That is better. We are as close as can be. From now on, we will lean on each other. Thank you, my love. Professor, I've been waiting for you. How much time do you suppose we have spent together? Enough that I believe I can predict how you'll feel about something. 
The truth is, I want to ask you a once-in-a-lifetime question. Um, yes. I know that the end of the war hasn't granted you limitless free time, but you must have more time on your hands than you did during the war, yes? Would you spend that time with me? I want to know more about you. I want to solve the mysteries that surround you. I don't think I'll ever meet anyone more intoxicating than yourself. I want you to be mine, and I want to be yours. Here is proof of my desire. Will you accept it? Oh, thank goodness. I don't know what I would have done with myself had you turned me down. Though, I feel like I've come to understand rather a lot about you. So I didn't honestly think you'd reject me. You doubt me? But I was proven correct the very moment you took the ring. You'll see. I will come to understand you even more. Our future together has only just begun. Before I become bored of this business, I wish to learn all there is about your crest and your strength. And perhaps we'll even come up with ways I could help you guide Fodlan. I as a crest scholar and you as a leader of Fodlan. We will take our first steps together into this new world, the two of us working as one. Once things settle down, we can retire to the countryside place where the air is fresh, the lakes are full of fish, the sun is warm, and where we may nap deeply. Without naps, life is nothing but work. I value you too much to let you spend your whole life laboring for others. You're the hero of Fodlan, after all. Besides, naps are the entire point of retirement. It may be some time until we can nap beneath a tree, peaceful sunlight filtering through the branches. But when that day comes, to have you there lying by my side, paradise, and we will have made it so. Yes, we did it! Professor, um, what are you doing here? Don't you have a lot of important stuff to do? Unlike me, who obviously has a little too much free time. As you can see. You can't stay away. What's that supposed to mean? I know I can be a little reckless, but I don't need a babysitter. Oh, do you mean that you snuck out here because you wanted to see me? We can go train if you want. The training ground isn't too far, and... You... what? I don't... I don't really know what to say. I guess I never thought about marriage. I mean, I never really had a reason to. Uh, boy, uh, now, now I'm babbling. <laughs> I always secretly hoped I could spend my life with you, but this is so unexpected. Oh, come on! You can't just spring something like this on me. Now I'm flustered, and I can't think of the right thing to say. I'm just... so happy. And I can't stop grinning. I bet I look like a real fool right now. <laughs> <sighs> I knew it! I do have a silly grin on my face. All right, now that I've pulled myself together, I want to tell you the same thing you told me. I love you, and I want to marry you. Listen, I know I can be reckless, stubborn, and generally difficult to be around at times, but you once said you'd accept me, even with all of my flaws. When you said that, I made a promise to myself. I promised that I'd always protect you. 
And, well, sometimes you might have to protect me from myself. But I intend to keep my promise. <laughs> I'm the one who should be thanking you, putting up with me and all. Whew, okay. I gotta let all these emotions out. I know. You should shout with me. Ready? I love you forever! Oh, come on! You didn't do it! Sorry for calling you out here like this. I wanted to talk. Just the two of us. First of all, I wanted to say thank you for all your hard work. It seems like our long struggle may finally be coming to an end. The way forward will certainly be rough. Right now, Fodlan is like a newborn, frail and easily upset. If we don't create a new ruling system soon, the Empire and Kingdom will descend into chaos. The coronation ceremony is the first step. Only then will Fodlan truly be a single, united land. I'm sorry that I won't be by your side at such an important event, but I'm certain you'll do great. I must return to my homeland. As for ruling this new unified land, well, I'll leave that to you. The Fodlan blood that flows in my veins. I've made use of it as best I could. Now I've got to use my other bloodline to change my homeland for the better. I have royal connections there too, insignificant as they may be. It's time for me to struggle all over again and see what good I can do. If I don't change things in both Fodlan and the lands beyond, I'll never set eyes on the kind of world I've dreamed of creating. You're the successor Rhea appointed, aren't you? And now you're also the hero who saved Fodlan. All those weak people who have nothing to cling to but their goddess, they'll rely on you just like they used to rely on Rhea. You'll be a leader all who are struggling to survive in war-torn lands can look up to. And I... I want a ruler who can lay down a new set of values for the people. Values that don't exclude anyone for being different. I know it's a lot to ask, but you're the only one who can do it. I have something else to ask. Please, I hope you'll accept this. When I first saw you wield the sword of the Creator, I wanted to use your power to my advantage. I wanted to use you to make my dream of a new world come true. But before long, I realized what I really wanted was to see that new world with you by my side. I still feel that way, you know? I always will. That's why I have to leave. But nothing will stop me from coming back. There's no way I'm gonna let you go. You know that, don't you? Thank you. For everything. I'll be back before you know it. We'll only be apart for a short while. And now, I'm off to cross Fodlin's throat. I love you. With everything I am. And the next time we see each other, it will be at the dawn of a whole new world. A peaceful, happy world. You've kept me waiting. Where have you been? The war may be over, but matters of government, diplomacy, and justice remain to be dealt with. There is one problem in particular that must be sorted first, however. You. Rather, you and me. <laughs> to think I had rehearsed a long preamble. Now when it matters, it's all vanished from memory as suddenly as the morning dew. To the point, then. I love you. In fact, I wish to marry you. Your candid sincerity is overwhelming. You must have known all along that I had feelings for you. I've already spoken to Her Majesty about this. She told me to follow my heart. She seems to prefer that you be with me rather than some dubious individual. So you could say that we have her blessing. Is that... a ring? You came here with the same idea. 
I cannot believe I am saying this. I am truly happy. I am afraid you've outdone me. I've brought no such token. <laughs> Not much of a suitor, am I? I've never done well with gifts or flattery. Protecting you is easy, but to be a good husband... <sighs> of course such a thing doesn't bother you. I hope I can support you with the same tenacity. Thank you for doing me this honor. <laughs> I once thought killing you would be a great challenge, but a real difficulty was declaring my love.